In this video, I'm going to try to answer the question, does alcohol break a fast? Or in other words, is it okay to drink alcohol, different types of alcoholic drinks, while you're fasting? So in order to do that, I'll talk a little bit about what are, what's in some different alcoholic drinks, and then kind of how alcohol affects some of the different goals of fasting, like how does it affect blood sugar and insulin levels and, and fat storage and things like that, and then kind of tying it all together in terms of whether it makes sense to use alcohol during fasting. So I'm not an expert on alcoholic drinks um, because I don't drink alcohol myself, but I did a little research and here's some of what I found out. So beer is usually about 5% alcohol by volume. Um, so if you drink a one 12 ounce can, it's about 100 calories just from the alcohol itself. And then wine's about 15% and hard liquor is 20 or 40% or potentially more. Um, now, beer also has some sugar and carbs in it, uh, maltose sugar, um, and about 10 to 15 grams of carbs per can on average. So sounds like beer is not a good fit, right? Because you're getting the sugar and the carbs. So anything that has a significant amount of sugar and carbs is not ideal for fasting for pretty obvious reasons, right? Because um, the sugar is going to raise your blood sugar, raise your insulin, promote fat storage, etc. cetera. Um, now, wine... Unfortunately, wine usually has the same problems. So it has a little more alcohol than beer, but wine is usually pretty sugary. And from what I understand, you usually you, you cannot know, you won't know how much sugar is in the wine because they don't have to put it on the nutrition labels. So unless you're getting it from a specific company that makes some very detailed claims about having low sugar and stuff like that, usually wine's going to be pretty sugary. And one of the reasons for that, of course, is they know that people like sugar. And so if they give you wine with sugar, you're more likely to drink more of it and be more addicted to it and so forth. Um, so that's kind of the issue with wine. Um, and then the hard liquor, in contrast, if you're just drinking the pure spirits, then I guess it doesn't have sugar. It just has the alcohol, right? But a higher amount of the alcohol. Um, and then, of course, all these things are used in different drinks, right? Like different mixed drinks. Again, I'm not an expert on those, but you you might know more about it than me. But if, if it's a mixed drink that has sugar, which I think, for example, margaritas, right, probably have sugar in them, um, then, you know, you got the same problem you had with the beer and the wine where there's a lot of sugar. So um, so that's kind of a quick rundown. But then now how does, uh, if we kind of leave aside the sugar and the carbs for a minute, because obviously you have a, if you have a significant amount of sugar, that's, that's, that's a no-no during fasting. But if we leave that aside and just talk about the alcohol, then how does that impact fasting. Well, if you're talking about a short-term fast or a long-term fast, oftentimes what you're trying to do during fasting is improve blood sugar, improve insulin levels, and reduce body fat, right? So if you want to talk about those issues specifically, um, so alcohol, while it may not spike blood sugar just on its own, it does have some indirect effects that are not ideal. So for example, here's a study that kind of showed that um, when alcohol was given, it it causes insulin resistance, uh, meaning that the sugar, the, the patient's um, glucose level would go higher um, in the context of having that alcohol on board because the insulin is not working as well. Um, and then alcohol also seems to promote fat storage, as shown in this, um, this paper right here. And um, in the context of eating carbs, so if you are eating carbs, which is not fasting, but if you're eating carbs and then drink alcohol, then the alcohol causes the insulin levels to go higher than they would otherwise. So as you can see, there's a variety of indirect effects related to blood sugar and insulin that are not ideal. So it's really not ideal to have much alcohol on board during fasting, whether that's short-term fasting or long-term fasting. Now, what if you want to say, oh, I'm going to do this prolonged fast and I just want to have a little bit of alcohol on one of the days, you know, uh, and without any sugar, it's just kind of the pure liquor or spirits. Um, well, you could do that. Um, in fact, there was this guy I read about that did a uh, self-experiment where he where he drank some low sugar wine from this specific company that he was kind of promoting, and it only reduced his ketone levels a little bit, and then it kind of recovered the next day. So, it, it, I mean, it did have some not ideal effects, but then he was able to recover the next day. Okay. Um, and then you're also kind of more sensitive to alcohol when you're fasting. So you wouldn't want to use as much alcohol. So I, so basically you'd want to have it be very small quantities, if any, <laughs> that you were going to use during a fast in that kind of context. So the bottom line is there are a variety of reasons why alcoholic drinks are not ideal during fasting. And my personal bias is they're not ideal at all. 
<laughs> whether you're fasting or not, um, for a variety of reasons. But if you're looking for other things to drink during fasting, black coffee is good, you know, caffeine in the morning or whatever, tea, unsweetened tea. Um, you can add things like little lemon or apple cider vinegar to the water if you like that sort of thing. Um, seltzer water is pretty good. doesn't have a huge downside, just the carbonation, in other words, without a bunch of sweeteners or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff you can drink, but alcohol is definitely, definitely not ideal. Um, and like I said, my bias is I don't think alcohol is a good thing for society in general <laughs> or for health in general. And that's partly because I see a lot of the really tragic effects of it uh, working in the hospital and so forth, um, which are it's super, super common. It causes, ruins people's lives all the time. Um, but uh, but yeah, so in terms of fasting, it is definitely not ideal. But if you were to use it, there's those caveats where you'd want to use the, ones, the, the types without sugar and in very small quantities. So I've got another video right here that talks a lot more about what to drink during fasting. So it gives a variety of different options uh, related to that. And by the way, if you want to see any of the specific research studies I was talking about in this video, then just check out the link to the blog post, which is below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.